Hello, and in this Commodore 64 demo peak video, we are going to look at bouncing a bitmap screen around. Now, bitmap screens on the Commodore 64 have 10,000 bytes each. So it's actually quite a lot of work for just the CPU to scroll a bitmap. So how does this demo scroll this bitmap screen quite quickly? So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. Now, this demo effect is really interesting because it combines both the horizontal uh, HSP or DMA delay technique and also the vertical, which is the line crunch. So I'm just skipping forward to the interesting part of the demo here. There we go, a nice, I think, what is it, a Bones logo. With some nice multiplex sprites over the top, but we can see that the screen, the bitmap screen that we can see in the graphics map debug view there, is swinging around merrily, swinging around really very quickly. And there's only really one way that you can do this on a default unexpanded Commodore 64, and that's to use the HSP and DMA te delay technique and the vertical line crunching technique. Now we can see in the text screen view there, which in bitmap view, remember that it's actually one of the color screens. We can see the color screen data is being read in two separate banks there in the debug memory view, and we can see that using the bitmap debug view there we could see two separate parts of data chunks in memory that were being read and then copied into the two different color screens there one in the in the color ram and then one in the color screen data so i've just saved a snapshot there so that we can use the debug graphics views again to uh, futz around with the memory so that we can try and understand what this routine is doing a little bit better. So first of all, I can see that the dark areas of the screen, the black areas of the screen are actually being cleared with ATS. It's a similar effect to the horizontally scrolling um, this or IK Plus logo where, where we didn't want to see or where the demo didn't want to see the screen data wrapped around, it was just blanking it out with black characters. But if we start filling in the pixels for the bitmap screen, we can definitely see what's going on in the Commodore 64 view. We can see that we're actually rendering uh, a lot more pixels in the deep in the bitmap view. Now these, this blank area of memory here is just blank. We're just filling it with some pixels, but it's not going to render above the standard bitmap size for the Bones logo. What we really want to do is that we really want to stop the screen being filled with black characters. So I'm just editing what looks like the color screen data and you can immediately see there on the left that we start getting the repeated bitmap data for the Bones logo. So I'm just going to fill in um, as best as possible with this debug editing stuff here. I'm just going to fill in all of these black pixel gaps here, which is color RAM data, okay? And then we can start seeing actually that the Bones logo is now being surrounded with differently colored Bones logo bitmap data. Uh, and that's because the, the values that I'm putting into the uh, color RAM copies there, um, are, are, you know, they don't correspond to the actual pixels in the logo. So, but we can see here that the demo is actually shifting around the entire screen and the screen is tiled horizontally and also vertically, of course, because that's the way that the VIC chip just renders the, the bitmap graphics data. It just tiles, it kind of like loops around, right? So it's just tiling uh, the entire video matrix. So actually, you know, it looks, um, a little bit more 
Now, impressive, doesn't it? If you know that you're actually swinging the whole tiled screen around. So let's, let's fill um, what are the last eight characters of the bitmap data, okay, with um, what is it? AA, which is one zero one zero one zero one zero in binary. And there we go. Because we're running the multiplexed sprites over the top, the multiplexer needs to update the sprite pointers. And we can see now that we've put some solid color in to the bitmap data there, we can see that the, that the screen color data, also don't forget that the, spar the sprite image pointers are in the last eight bytes of the text screen, which is the color screen data in this case or one copy of the color screen data. So when the multiplexer updates those sprite image pointers, we now get to see them in the bitmap. So basically the logo has been constructed in such a way that it, it has black screen area at the point where the sprite pointers are. So we don't see that on the screen in the, de in the demo itself. Now, when I filled that whole memory for the um, one of the color screen backups there. I filled the whole memory with a repeating pattern. We can see now that the demo is swinging around the entire screen. So doesn't that kind of look, you know, if you had the right colors, uh, you would have a nicely tiled bones logo swinging around the screen. And uh, one bones logo is offset with the other bones logo. And I think, you know, I think that would look a little bit more impressive rather than doing all of the extra effort in clearing to black the, the areas around the Bones logo to avoid that tiling effect being visible. Uh, I think the demo could have used both, to be honest. Um, it could have had um, initially tiled and then done all of the extra work to not make it tiled and to, to blank out with black. The, the border areas around the logo. I think that would have been a little bit more impressive to be honest, but hey ho, there we go. Uh, and maybe uh, alternate between both of those modes to kind of like really drive home the fact that you are swinging around the entire screen. Uh, that would be really quite cool, right? So let's just double check that this demo is doing what we think. Um, in other words, combining the HSP DMA delay technique with the line crunch technique. Now I've called this combined technique of using both the horizontal and vertical techniques together. I've seen it called various different things. I've seen them, seen it called VSP for a vari variable screen position. I've seen it called AGSP for any given screen position. Um, so I don't think you know, it depends on who you ask and it depends on where you see it being uh, documented. But there we go. We're debugging the raster beam sprite, uh, the, ra the raster beam, beam cycle schedule for the VIC chip. And there we go. We've got another no op slide. And it looks like it's doing uh, the line crunch uh, first. Uh, so it looks like we're doing a line crunch. Let's just keep on going through the cycles. Look for the bad line state. We're currently in the idle state. Look for the bad line. Look for the VC base being updated. There we go. It's just doing a little bit of a raster beam synchronization there. So the sprite scrolling message up at the top of the screen is reusing uh, this blank area of memory where we're doing the line crunches. So we're looking for the bad line state progressing. We'll just keep on going through the cycles. VC base is still at zero currently. So there we go. We'll keep on going through. It's doing a store into D011, which basically tells the VIC that we're right at the end of the line. We're now in a bad line state. We've basically told the VIC that we want to uh, crunch uh, the line by tweaking the value. And there we go, VC base is updated to 28. It's now updated to 50. So yes, the this demo is doing a line crunch. First, we keep on going through 
uh, the cycles, it's still doing that line crunch code. Eventually, it gets to this position here. Now we must really start seeing the DMA technique come along to kill the VC base, or to tweak it rather. And there we go, it's happened just right there. So it went from 230 to 232 around about this time. Just narrowing down the targeting cursor for the correct cycle at which it's done that. So 232 is obviously not aligned with uh, 28 in hex, obviously. So it's read uh, an extra few characters so it's offset the uh, the bc base uh, the character base offset appropriately for the horizontal position that it wants to move this bitmap screen and now it's rendering the sprites it's rendering the screen interesting to note that the uh c64 debug gui um, graphics view there is actually showing the bad lines as opposed to the previous demo that wasn't showing bad lines for the vertically scrolling screens that we can see the schedule there we go there's the deck d011 there's the increment d011 and it's doing it right or almost at the end of the uh, character screen there so basically it's telling the vic that it wants to go into a bad line state at that position there so for the last few cycles of that raster line there it goes into a bad line state which basically gets the vic to fetch a couple of extra characters at that position so if we put a breakpoint now at that instruction which is the um the dma hsp uh, trigger instruction we can see that this deck and increment of the d011 register is actually appearing at um, different raster X positions. As each frame is advanced, uh, watch the raster X red, and we can see that it's raster X at 140, 138, 128, 120, 118. The reason why it's um, going in eight pixel jumps is just because each character, each cycle is uh, eight pixels wide. Each CPU cycle one megahertz CPU cycle approximately is, is eight pixels wide. Uh, and that just basically tells the VIC chip to, to fetch a variable different number of horizontal characters to finish off that last uh, character line row by telling the VIC to do that bad line state for X number of characters and pulling in that new number of bytes into the VC base and just updating the offset that way. So this demo uh, cleverly does the line crunch first and then does the DMA delay. Basically a few lines down, a few character rows down from where the logo needs to start being displayed. And then basically it, it I think it's probably using the same technique of um, using the illegal uh, text mode probably to mask out the area up at the top of the screen. That's the simplest, cleanest way of doing it, uh, like the other demo was. And then basically turning on the screen and turning on the display, and then the VIC chip will render the bitmap screen at its particular offset. So we've got some code to do this. I'm going to provide some example code to show how to put all of these techniques together. Let's just get the editor up and running. Let's just enable the HSP DMA delay example first. And if I move the joystick left and right, then you can see here that the screen is being scrolled left and right, but it's only being scrolled by this stable raster interrupt here, doing the DMA uh, register tweak, DMA delay register tweak on the VIC. If I enable the line crunch, then moving the joystick up and down will progressively add one line of line crunch depending on how far up and down I move the joystick. So there we go. We can see that we can move up and down in, in character row steps 
very quickly just by doing a line crunch. The little red bar, green bar there, indicates exactly how much line crunch I'm introducing. Now, text screen, bitmap screen, doesn't really matter. The VIC chip uses that VC base offset to fetch bitmap data. And you can see here, the horizontal screen position is being done before the line crunch, as opposed to the line crunch and then the DMA delay uh, technique here. But I just did it that way because I didn't really want to change the code that much. I just had the uh, DMA delay done in the top uh, part of the border just before it starts displaying characters because it's just an easier place to do it. So you can switch on the debug view and that means that the illegal text mode is not being enabled. So you can see all of the lines up at the top of the screen being crunched. Now every time a character row in the screen is being crunched, you get this uh, basically in, in this case, it's a black line. Um, it can change depending on if you've got bitmap mode enabled, I think, and, and this is just text screen mode. So you just see a black line. Uh, it's just repeating, I think, the last um, row of pixels. And I think because the character set uh, has a black bottom row, then I think that's just basically what's being displayed. I think. Anyway, but so basically the, the screen, the line crunch is displaying as this black area. And that means that the bottom of the green bar there, the bottom of the red green uh, raster effect bar, uh, that's where the screen should have been turned back on again. But the screen just hasn't been disabled using using the illegal display mode. So you can see all of the, the, the rubbish that you don't really want to see. So that's why these demos, they tend to cover it over with sprites. They tend to use the illegal text mode to turn off the graphics sequencer so that basically you just don't see all of this rubbish and you see a nice clean effect. You can see here the uh, character rows, the character screen is showing that nice little offset uh, between the tiled screens. Uh, the the same character rows, just you know, you can I can move around with the diagonals and I can scroll the uh, text screen around uh, very quickly. Uh, same as that bouncing. Um, logo swing. So the, all of this code is in my public uh, C64 public uh, GitHub repository. It is this uh, raster test 2.a source file and you can just get it all from there. Uh, there is a little um, build it batch file uh, which calls my heavily tweaked version of the Acme assembler which will then output a PRG, which then you can just run in the emulator or on a real Commodore 64. Uh, there's also a link I'm going to put in the video description to the code base article on AGSP, which is the any given screen position or you know, variable screen position, however you want to call it. So thank you very much for watching these Commodore 64 demo peak videos. If you like this kind of deep technical dive into VIC hardware tricks, or I might actually go into some SID tricks as well for demos. If you like this kind of stuff anyway, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel. And I really hope to catch you around next time. Have a great day or evening or night, wherever you are.